So how exactly does the Dollars trilogy work? Given that all of these classic spaghetti westerns feature Clint Eastwood as the man with no name, with clear nods to a shared continuity, despite the movies featuring many of the same actors playing different roles, and a timeline of events that just doesn't seem to add up. Well, this video will hopefully answer all of those questions by revealing the Hidden Dollars Trilogy timeline that might well change the order that you watch these movies in in the future. But to understand how it all fits together, we first have to go back to 1964, when director Sergio Leone was riding high off the success of A Fistful of Dollars, a standalone western remake of the 1961 samurai movie Yo Jimbo. And despite the unprecedented success of the movie, Sergio Leone never really had any plans to direct a sequel, and certainly not a trilogy, despite strong demand from the studio behind the first film. And reportedly, this pressure led to a big falling out between the two parties, ending in a court battle which ultimately ruled that Leone was allowed to direct a sequel to A Fistful of Dollars independently, without the permission of the studio that owned the rights, just as long as the main character, played by Clint Eastwood, remained generic and unconnected to the first movie. So when Leone decided that he would in fact like to make a sequel called For A Few Dollars More, the director simply recast Clint Eastwood in the exact same role, but just changed his name from Joe to Manco. And a couple of years later, when it came to making The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, Leone pulled the same trick again, this time going with the nickname of Blondie to suggest that Eastwood is playing an original character, despite sharing the exact same costume and character traits as all of the iterations that came before. But by this stage, the Clint Eastwood character had already ironically become known as the man with no name, thanks to a concerted marketing effort by the American distributor United Artists, who agreed with Sergio Leone that his trio of spaghetti westerns should be promoted together as a collection called the Dollars Trilogy. So in short, during the making of For A Few Dollars More and the development of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, Sergio Leone was probably well aware that his standalone western movies were destined to be viewed as a franchise, despite all of their obvious contradictions and his original plan to keep them separate. And so, a lot like the James Bond franchise, Sergio Leone decided to unilaterally add a subtle, ongoing continuity to the so-called trilogy, loosely tying the isolated adventures into a subtle but surprisingly consistent timeline, which is actually completely different to the order that the movies were released in. Because chronologically, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly is actually the first entry on the timeline, given that it's set in 1862 during the Civil War. And it's in this film that we see Clint Eastwood don his iconic getup for the first time, picking up pieces of his pre-established outfit throughout the film before retrieving his famous poncho from a wounded soldier, just before the final showdown. So because of this, the next film on the timeline is actually for a few dollars more, which we can infer is set roughly a decade later, given that the character of Colonel Douglas Mortimer makes clear that he's a veteran of the Civil War. And during the scene in which Mortimer flicks through a newspaper archive, you can actually see an article dated 1872, placing the events of the movie sometime after that year. Also, another scene to note is when Mortimer shoots Manco's hat into the air multiple times, leaving it pierced with holes. And this leads us to the final film on the timeline, A Fistful of Dollars, which actually starts with a shot that clearly shows bullet holes in Joe's hat, suggesting that the first film, The Dollars Trilogy, is actually the last. And this is later confirmed by a gravestone featured in the movie, which is clearly dated 1873. Also, during the scene in which Marisol asks Joe why he saved her, in a rare moment of vulnerability, he says, Now, some have theorized that this could be a retconned callback to Mortimer's sister, who was a victim of a very similar situation and for a few dollars more. And this would give a lot of credence to the idea that the character Clint Eastwood plays throughout the trilogy is in fact the same character all along, adopting a different nickname for each adventure while attempting to earn back all the money that he somehow lost in between each film, so that he can finally retire like he wanted to and for a few dollars more. Either way, the reverse timeline is a really cool concept and works surprisingly well, making for a whole different viewing experience on rewatch. However, I think it says a lot about the genius of Sergio Leone that you can watch his Dollars trilogy in any order you like or in total isolation and still get just as much out of them. 
But let me know below what order did you first watch the Dollars Trilogy in? And while you're here, you might also want to check out this video right here.